tonight. Showbiz Tonight is going to reveal in a dramatic way just what it's like to be a high-profile witness who gets grilled for days on end in a trial much like the Jody Arias murder case. With me tonight, there is someone who really knows, Cato Kalin, who of course was infamously grilled during the O.J. Simpson murder trial, something that changed his life forever. Cato's with us tonight from Hollywood, and I really appreciate you being here, Cato. Hey, AJ. Uh, thanks for having me, of course. I'm a big fan of you. And well, you look great. And, and you haven't changed one bit. But we can talk about all that in a minute. I'm thinking if there's exactly. anybody who may just know what you went through, it is this woman, domestic abuse expert Alice LaViolette, who just got off the stand after 11 grueling days of the Jody Arias murder trial, called by the defense to try to prove that Jody was abused by the boyfriend she's accused of killing. Now let's flash back to 1994. This is when Cato testified for a grueling five days in the O.J. Simpson trial. Cato was in the guest house on O.J.'s property the night Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were murdered. And after being called by the prosecution to testify, you remember this? He was declared a hostile witness. Can you tell us whether uh, you began looking for another place to live? Yes. And why was that? I, I was periodically looking for places to live. Did you have a conversation with the defendant about his situation with Nicole Brown? Yes. Okay, so you cut your hair a bit, Cato, but look, Remembering that moment, I know yeah. you must be able to closely relate to what this domestic abuse expert's life has been like since she was called as a witness in the Jody Arias trial. You were grilled, as I said, for five days. This domestic abuse expert has been on the stand for 11 days so far. How grueling is it to sit on the stand like that day after day with the whole world watching? Well, uh, AJ, uh, the difference is, of course, uh, the word expert for her, I think she'd be a lot more used to being grilled. I was just the layman first time in my life being in a courtroom. Uh, I think people should realize that you go over questions sometimes, uh, the attorneys. And I went over the questions with the prosecution, and then at some point they changed it, and it made me look like, oh man, I was just thinking, going, I don't remember this part of the, uh, uh, like, sort of a rehearsal. Uh, but as an expert witness, I imagine that uh, being grilled, the prosecution is just going to try to tear her to shreds, which I think they did. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what you had to deal with at a point when you were getting grilled by the prosecution team. Let's revisit a bit of that. Did he mention to you any plans that he had for later on that day? Yes. And what was that? Uh, there was a recital, the dance recital of Sydney's daughter with Nicole. And what time did he plan to go to that? Uh, five o'clock recital. Did he talk to you or mention anything to you about Nicole during that conversation? Um, it was, they weren't together. How did that come up? It was conversation. I mean, I was reading a paper and it would come up about just Nicole, that their relationship was over. Do you recall how that happened to come up? How come you were talking about him and Nicole being through? I think it just came up. You can feel the tension in that room. That's Prosecutor Marsha Clark, of course, questioning you about your conversation with O.J. about Nicole Brown Simpson before she was murdered. Did she make you extremely nervous, Cato? Uh, well, you have to understand also, I was her witness. I wasn't a, a witness for the defense. I was uh, Marsha's witness right. in this trial for the prosecution. So the, the difficult part was, yes, she, uh, she uh, I think, she did her job, but I think she... I felt like I was sort of abused. I think people have got to realize everybody's got an agenda. I was basically a pawn, AJ, and uh, I was being used of in her advantage, which I wanted to help uh, completely. You have a job there as a witness. I have a job is, is to answer everything honestly, right. uh, to the best of my knowledge, and, and that's what I did. And of course, to make the five dollars for the day. <laughs> yeah, well, saying. exactly. And, and unless you've been there, it, it's hard to imagine how nerve-wracking that must be, even for this domestic abuse exactly. expert who is paid to be there, and she's done it before. It's got to be hard for her to be keeping her cool at the Jody Arias trial. So how hard is that to do and remain calm like that? How did you get through? Well, I think what happens with the, they, they try to actually push your buttons. Uh, uh, they have people taking notes of what certain keywords to say to get this woman to react in a certain way that's going to help their case. And I think they push the right buttons with her uh, because at, at some point I, I th felt like she did not look like an expert anymore. This is true. A lot of people are, are, are saying that and saying it's not really being beneficial a, a, as much as they're hoping it is. But did, did, did he, go ahead, Cato. Go ahead. 
I was going to say it also. I think their job is to make the jury possibly not like her. And my uh, my opinion was watching is uh, they did a great job because you want the jury to really like your team, the prosecution. You want them to really like you. I think they did a great job of possibly n making the jury not really like this woman or to believe her, which is more important. Let me ask you a basic logistical question because I've always wondered this. Mm -hmm. I wondered about your time on the stand for five days. I wondered about the defense witness on the stand, the expert witness up there for 11 days. Uh, what happens when you need to go to a break? I mean, all of a sudden you got to go to the bathroom. Do you have to, you have to ask him <laughs> what happens? Actually, what happens is I was there for a month. I'm on call. I'm not. I'm there on stand five days, but I'm actually at the courthouse in this very, very, very small room. Basically, it's a closet. I was. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, it was. Uh, I sat in a closet, and uh, yeah, you you can actually go to the bathroom, but when you're on the stand, no. And let me tell you something. When you're on the stand, regardless, you are so nervous. Uh, I was, and you have to go to the bathroom. It, it's an incredible feel. See, the difference, AJ, is a lot of people can be a witness in maybe a car crash or a fender bender. The first time you're a witness in a, in a double homicide or in a murder trial, it's completely different. And the difference being, a detective you see in the stand, they're used to it. They're professionals. Right. They know how to do this. Expert witnesses know how to do this. A, a person like myself, they don't, they don't know what to expect. It's completely, it, it is nerve wracking. Yeah. And what goes on, the media, your, your public figure, everything in your life becomes public knowledge. And anything they want to put out there, you can be exploited. And, and that's the part of it being a witness. Your life does change forever, good or bad. People have opinions. They want you to answer the questions they believe you. They want to believe what they think. You know, this, I was like a soap character, Cato. It wasn't, I wasn't a real person to them. So if I didn't answer the question, they, what, the answer they wanted, you know, they hated me or they loved me. You know, it makes a big difference. Yeah, you're and of course, I became famous with my name. I think right. it was because it was Cato. Well, you're there because it's a criminal case, but you do become this character. And I, I remember it very distinctly, yeah. Cato. I remember watching this go, go on. I remember you and I actually met in Hollywood a very long time ago, briefly at a gym. We were introduced by a mutual friend. And, and it was as many people as I get to meet in my life. It was just interesting because you are this iconic character. Yeah. And, and that's what's happening at the Jody Arias trial. And we're seeing mm. a, another character that has played out so much animosity between the domestic abuse expert in the case and the lead prosecutor Juan Martinez who is now this character let's watch a bit of their exchange are you saying that mr. Alexander when he was speaking with the defendant was in the same relationship as you were with the defendant when you were speaking to her if you were in my group I would ask you to take a time out mr. Martinez judge would you please admonish the witness to yes withhold those comments and ask that mr. The jury Violet disregard the outburst. yes Ladies and gentlemen, disregard the witness's last statement. Ms. LaViolet, please just answer the questions. More tension there, Cato. Yeah. They, they really don't They're, like each other. Were you experiencing some of that when things shifted with Marsha Clark as the prosecutor? 100%. Uh, because I, di I didn't even understand, uh, A.J., the, the whole thing of becoming a hostile witness. I, didn't, I, didn't, I thought that meant that I had to be shouting at her or something. I didn't understand that it was uh, something she could use in her favor. But completely, I saw the change happen. And I was I was sort of under attack. And like I said, I have nothing against Marsha Clark. She had to do she did her job, and um, it was just a very difficult uh, situation of not knowing, uh, of going through a rehearsal, of not uh, hearing different questions. Uh, and, and so basically, what happens, AJ, is when the defense sees that, they say, "Boy, maybe we can get them on our side now." And it's it really is it's their agenda of just you're being used. And uh, that's pretty much it. And you didn't set out for it, but look, you'll forever be linked with the case that I, made you famous, and, and the same is happening I, with these characters. AJ, it's great. You say, I got to tell you a really quick story because you talk about being famous. This just happened yesterday. Of course, you know Hollywood. I'm at the Kodak Theater, and I have these wonderful, wonderful Asian people that came up to me and just, they said, can we please have a picture of you? We think you're adorable. And so I, I said, yeah, of course. And while I'm taking the picture, one of the women said, we think it's so great that you give away homes to people. <laughs> and I said, I said, no, I didn't know no, you that's, were doing that. that's Ty Pennington. Oh, nice. no, no, I am Cato Kane. Uh, I don't build homes. I live in people's homes. There you True go. story, AJ. We'll leave True it there, story. Kato. I'll write that one down. It was really great getting your, your very special insight on this. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks. I love you. Thanks so much, AJ.